Welcome back to the Bitcoin Zodiac. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I hope you're all feeling good in between these eclipse, these eclipses. Um, I know that it can feel a little wobbly at times or a, a little bit like the ground is moving beneath you, but um, so I hope you are too. But um, we are deep in Libra season, so um, kind of a beautiful time, a really beautiful time, shifting from that grounded Virgo energy into the airy um, sort of influence of Libra. So it's actually a really beautiful time. Um, looking forward to this eclipse and new moon, the solar eclipse and new moon and ready to sort of get on the other side of this sort of more bumpy astrology. Um, although I think that we still sort of need to be aware of shifts in the markets, um, you know, for the next couple of months, really, until we have the US election out of the way, because that usually provides some, you know, dramatic um, events um and some shenanigans so yeah I'm not sure that we're out of the woods quite yet but I'm really happy to be getting on the other side of the eclipses um they've brought a lot of things to light for me personally and um yeah I found them pretty transformative so let me know how you guys are feeling as well but um as I said we're in Libra season so Libra like really connects us with others so taking that focus off of ourselves and um, relationships really play a crucial role in our personal and energetic evolution. So um, partners really help us grow and friendships really help us grow. And um, like they're, they're a space for us to grow, to admit our mistakes and to just enjoy life's wonders you know and the beauty of life with other people um but at the foundation of that is really self-love so even though libra is very much about partnership and balance in partnership and relationships um the foundation of that is really loving yourself and that's essential for every relationship in your life so how you treat yourself is really a mirror of how you treat others and also how they will treat you so your relationship with yourself, you know, inf very much influences how you give and receive love. So that can also be a focus during the season. So um, as I sort of hinted at, Libra is, you know, the symbol for Libra is the scales and it teaches us the importance of balance and equilibrium. So life won't always be peaceful. Um but you do have the, the tools available to restore that equilibri equilibrium and bring things back into balance and sort of just restore some calm into your life. And that's especially poignant during eclipse season because there can be things that are really sort of stand out and maybe rock us or, um, you know, shift us off balance. And so Libra is sort of here to bring that balance back into your life. Um, so you want to explore practices like breathing techniques, affirmations, meditation, and yoga, and, um, you know, just things that, again, are going to send to yourself and bring yourself back into balance. So you want to learn to recognize signs that your balance is shifting before you kind of, before you really lose yourself in that. So before you lose your cool, before you react to things, you want to recognize signs that you're out of balance. So really pay attention to your breath, to your heart rate and to your thoughts, just as indicators of disharmony and begin to understand your own personal patterning and that can sort of set you up that you you kind of know what the triggers are you kind of know those feelings that you're you're out of balance you're out of alignment and so that you can bring yourself back so just develop those tools during this time you can develop those tools to maintain like a calm energy in moments of adversity like you may be in deep adversity 
um, during these eclipses um, and had things that have really thrown you off balance. So you really want to use this time to develop those tools to be able to maintain that calm energy, um, even in those trying moments. So if you do react from a place of imbalance, you want to forgive yourself and be patient with yourself as well. So that unconditional love just allows you to embrace your imperfections. And this practice also enables you to extend that grace to other people. And, and that is really what fosters growth and depth in relationships. So um, without that self-love, feedback from others can feel like an attack. It can feel very harsh. Whereas with self-love, you can receive feedback as an opportunity for growth. So relationships always offer new perspectives that can help you evolve and overcome blocks. So stay open to suggestions from people that you value and trust and um, view them rather than as criticism, view them as tools for self-improvement. Also just observe, again, I think that Libra is a, is a perfect time to really start understanding your own personal patterning. So just observe how you react to feedback from um, people you're in relationship with. So do you receive it with grace or, or do you feel defensive? Um, because relationships allow you to see yourself from a new vantage point through another person's eyes. So you can use your partner's perspective to grow, but always be grounded in that self-love. So really the, the goal of Libra season or the focus for Libra season is that with unconditional self-love, you can embrace feedback, admit when you're wrong and grow from every relationship. And that deepens your connections with those around you. So of course we have the Libra solar eclipse and new moon. So we have um, the Libra solar eclipse is an annular eclipse. So where the moon doesn't completely cover the sun. So leaving this beautiful ring of fire effect. Um, it's only visible this time, I think from South areas in South America, um, but the energetic impact of this eclipse will definitely be felt globally. So Solar eclipses are like a supercharged new moon. They carry all of the potential of the new moon, but with just a very intensified energy. So during a new moon, the sun and the moon align, creating a powerful conjunction that allows for setting intentions and manifesting our desires. And especially during the um, solar eclipse, the veil between the conscious and the subconscious is thinner. The veil between the 3D and the 5D, the veil between um, the seen and the unseen is thinner. So it makes it easier to hear your intuition, to connect with your energy centers and understand your deepest needs. So the energy of the solar eclipse enhances this potential. So it means that the intentions that you set during this time carry even more weight and manifestation power. So with this in mind, it is crucial to be clear and grounded before setting intentions during the eclipse. So as eclipses can bring kind of energetic chaos, you want to be setting your intentions or mapping out your intentions with some clarity. So you want to ground your energy through practices, like I said before, meditation, yoga, breath work, and just make sure that your intentions are aligned. And if you feel at all confused or misaligned, like it's perfectly normal, like you're not crazy. We're just in between eclipses. Um, but if you do feel that way, then wait until you have clarity before setting your intentions. So try to write your intentions after the um, like the maximum eclipse, um, but before the partial eclipse ends. So the energy lasts for about three days. So there is some flexibility um, depending on your time zone, but be open to um, revising your intentions as new insights come through after the eclipse or during the eclipse. So this eclipse comes during a time of intense collective change with countries and people seeming seeming to be incredibly divided. There just seems to be, and it has been for a while, this, this real tension and division everywhere you look around the world, in your own country, you know, um, in different spheres of influence, people are incredibly divided. And so 
Libra is the sign of balance and justice, and it prompts us to consider how peace can be found amidst this, this division. And the thing is, is that the macro is always a reflection of the collective micro. So it's really a time to sort of be looking inwards. If you're horrified by what you see externally and globally, collectively, then it's a time to sort of step back and and see how you're contributing to this in your own life, in your own way. So if you're horrified by violence and things like that, it's it's a time to sort of analyze where am I violent in my own life? Like how am I contributing to this collective energy? And I'm not saying even just physically violent, but are you violent with your words or something like that? And so it's really noticing that the, the things that you find offensive within the collective is have a look and see how that's playing out within your own life and, and sort of align that a little bit. Um, because Libra really teaches us to hold opposing truths and seek understanding without rushing to judgment. So justice in Libra's view requires seeing the whole picture before taking a stance. So if you're really embedded on one side, Libra is calling you to have a look and gain some understanding on an oppo on the opposing view to sort of bring in that justice. You may not change your point of view, but it's at least bringing that well-rounded, holistic acknowledgement and understanding before taking your own stance. So use this eclipse to reflect on the truths emerging in your life, question them, and determine what resonates with your personal journey. So the eclipse is conjunct Mercury, really emphasizing communication, and this can lead to information overload and intense discussions. So again, Libra encourages being open, listening without rushing to form judgments, avoid reacting impulsively, especially if you're triggered by others. So eclipses often bring strong emotions to the surface. So practicing mindfulness, breathing and meditation is really key to being centered during this time. With the moon and the sun squaring Mars in Cancer, feelings of impatience, anger or frustration may also arise. So physical movement can really help with this process to release these emotions from the body. And while Mars brings a warrior energy, cancer softens it. So allowing intuition to guide action. Libra also reminds us that actions taken from a place of peace are far more effective than actions driven by agitation or stress. Mars may stir up the desire to take immediate action, but Libra asks us to check if we are acting from a place of centeredness or a place of emotional imbalance. So you never want to be doing something in your life as a reaction to someone else or something else. You always want to be doing for, um, for yourself, for from that place of self-love for yourself. So um, if you're making changes in your life and things like that, you don't want it to be an act of protest against someone else. You want it to be from a place that you've decided that you're adding something to yourself. I hope that makes sense. Um, when we act from our center, our energy aligns with our surroundings and we naturally know what to do and say at the right time. So a true warrior, as Mars symbolizes, also knows when to receive information and when to act on it. So the sun and the moon um, oppose the north node in Aries, so adding pressure to decide your path forward. So this energy can also create a sense of urgency to take action, but sometimes it's better to sit with the uncomfortable feelings um, rather than try and race out of them and making reactive decisions in the process. So balance is key. And once you find it, your next steps will naturally align with the right path. Um, so that, that's always the key message of Libra is really balance. So use this energy of the eclipse to reflect your path, but remember to continually seek your center. Allow the eclipse to reveal what you need to see and remain patient until the full picture becomes clear. Take time for some grounding practices and um, that will help you maintain an equilibrium during this transformative and somewhat turbulent period. 
So what does this new moon and solar eclipse have in store for Bitcoin? Um, in financial astrology and personal astrology, a new moon represents new beginnings, fresh starts, and a time for setting intentions. So when it's combined with a solar eclipse, this energy is massively amplified. So it marks a period of significant shifts and transformative changes. With both a new moon and solar eclipse occurring in Libra, um, it's a sign associated with balance, with fairness, with relationships. And um, this moment carries particular weight in financial astrology. So as I said, the moon, new moon phase is traditionally a time for planting seeds um, for future growth. And in the context of financial markets, this often signals a time for new investment opportunities, launching new ventures or balancing existing portfolios. So during this new moon, emotions and intuitions are often heightened, which can be helpful for making calculated financial decisions. So investors may feel um, more tuned into market dynamics and have a better sense of timing. Solar eclipses act as powerful accelerators of change. They often bring hidden issues to the surface, creating sudden disruptions or revelations. These eclipses can signal a time when large unforeseen market events can occur. So they can be a pretty volatile time. As we discussed in the last episode with the lunar eclipse, um, this is just a bumpy time altogether, I think. And um, just as the new moon is a time to set intentions, a solar eclipse just supercharges those intentions. So making it a really crucial time to carefully plan your financial moves and consider your long-term strategies. Libra is ruled by Venus and it governs themes of fairness, balance, and harmony. So in financial terms, this means the markets may experience a rebalancing of assets. So we may see trends where sectors or specific assets that have been overvalued will correct themselves, while underappreciated assets may rise in value during this time. Libras also represents partnerships and relationships, which can point to mergers, acquisitions, or new alliances in businesses. Um, companies that are focused on collaboration or joint ventures um, may see a bit of a boost during this time. And Bitcoin could also experience increased adoption in new sectors due to cooperative, new cooperative ventures. So Libra's connection with justice and fairness may bring attention to regulatory matters. This is quite a theme through this, this period as well, especially in terms of Bitcoin or even the broader cryptocurrency market. So during this period, just watch for discussions about Bitcoin regulations or legal developments that could influence um, Bitcoin's price. So really the key dates during this eclipse season as well that we're looking at, the days surrounding the solar eclipse are likely to be the most volatile. So expect potential disruptions in the markets during this period, which could lead to both opportunities and risks. So focus on reviewing your portfolio, making necessarily ad necessary adjustments based on your long-term goals. I feel like I've been saying this for months, like this has really been the theme of the astrology is focusing on the long-term versus the short-term gains. Um, avoid making decisions um, in the heat of like heightened market emotions. And also post-eclipse period, the days and weeks after the eclipse, are likely to then bring clarity. So it's like this very turbulent time. It's like um, being in the ocean, the ocean's all churned up. And then you afterwards you have this time of calm and it just brings clarity and you can see to the bottom of the ocean. So it, it's kind of like that with these eclipses is they bring this volatility and this like confusion. And then the, the weeks and the days and weeks after the eclipse can bring clarity as just as the energies settle and new market patterns emerge. So this is a time to act on insights gained that you glean during the eclipse period. So once the market stabilizes, just considering, um, consider your positions um, and making make long-term investment decisions based on like clearer market trends when you have some clarity.
The new moon and solar eclipse in Libra represents like a really powerful time for the financial markets and of course, Bitcoin. The themes of balance, rebalancing and relationships um, will influence both traditional markets and Bitcoin. So we should really prepare for increased volatility around the eclipse and remain open to rebalancing our portfolios, stay informed about regulatory or collaborative developments that could impact Bitcoin. And above all, Clarity and caution will be key to navigating this transformative period. So on the 7th of October, we have a transiting Jupiter semi-square Bitcoin's natal Jupiter. So a Jupiter semi-square to Bitcoin's natal Jupiter is an important aspect to analyze because Jupiter is associated with growth, expansion, optimism, and wealth in financial astrology. And so the semi-square aspect, though it's considered a minor one, um, it does bring tension and friction, signaling a period of potential challenges, but also opportunities for growth. So that's really a theme um, through this time period as well, that it's there may be challenges, but these are these are not blockages, they're opportunities to grow and transcend. Um, so as I said, Jupiter is known as the planet exp of expansion, growth, and optimism. So when it's related to the financial markets, it can signify booming markets, increased demand, and general prosperity. So Jupiter also relates to speculative activities, and its expansive nature often encourages risk-taking and bold moves in investments, which can lead to large gains, but also significant losses if not approached carefully. So a semi-square is a 45 degree angle between two planets, and it's considered a minor challenging aspect. It creates some tension and frustration and obstacles, but these challenges can often lead to eventual growth if they're approached wisely. So in the case of Bitcoin, this aspect suggests internal conflicts within the market. It could manifest in fluctuations in confidence, um, or regulatory pressures that can create temporary disruptions. So a semi-square aspect often indicates the need for adjustment and reassessment. And um, so we need to be aware and prepared to reevaluate our strategies during this period as the usual expansive energy of Jupiter is slightly hindered. So we should expect slower growth or sort of a mixed bag of sentiment. Um, the semi-square aspect suggests that while Jupiter typically brings this expansion, this influence may be somewhat restricted or slower during this period. So Bitcoin's price could experience slower growth or a pullback and a struggle to maintain its upward momentum. So we may feel optimistic about Bitcoin's long-term prospects, but sort of face some short-term hurdles or frustrations, which I feel like we've been in for months. Um, I know we're all getting really bored of that, um, but hang in there. We're nearly on the other side of this. So this is really a time to sort of manage your expectations and not get caught up. Like I said in the last episode, um, which was correct as well, that, that, you know, there was an up move and people got very excited, but it's, it's, um, it's not yet the time for that, you know, it's, it's, we've got to keep these things in perspective. So instead really focus on steady incremental progress and avoid getting too caught up in like speculative hype. So there may be conflict between the optimistic vision for Bitcoin's future and the current market conditions, which could create some price volatility. So investors may feel bullish about Bitcoin's potential, but external factors such as regulations or global economic shifts, global tensions um, or institutional hesit hesitations could limit its growth and trajectory in the short term. So with Jupiter involved, there's always a temptation to take too much risk or overextend in the hopes of capturing big gains. But the semi-square adds tension and that gives us a bit of a heads up um, that there is some tension, there is some, there are some obstacles um, suggesting that overconfidence during this time could lead to miscalculations or unexpected losses. So this period may feel frustrating. It's felt frustrating for a while. Um, if you're feeling that way, you're not the only one um, because growth just hasn't come as quickly as 
as expected or as we would like even. Um, however, patients will be rewarded in the long term. Focus on the steady incremental progress and wait for the market to stabilize. So the transiting due to, um, Jupiter semi-square Bitcoin's natal Jupiter introduces period slower than expected growth for Bitcoin's price and the broader crypto market as well. Um, so while ex the expansive nature of Jupiter is still very much present, the semi-square aspect creates friction that may just limit that those rapid gains that we're used to. And it may cause some, some volatility because people are questioning questioning things. I mean, people are, are leaving crypto at this point. Everybody's bored, I think, um, but we're still here. And um, investors should just take a cautious approach during this time. Avoid risky speculative moves. It's not the time for that. And just focus on the long-term strategies, like just DCAing into Bitcoin. Um, if we get some major moves down, capitalizing on that and um, really focusing on, on building for the long-term. Patience and prudence will help navigate the challenges of this transit. Just ensure that we're well-positioned um, for the banana zone, basically, that, that is coming. It is coming. We're, it's just taking some time. And the longer this builds, the longer we stay in this accumulation pattern, um, the more profound the move out of it generally is. So, um, yeah, you want to be positioned when the tension eases and then the market resumes to a more, you know, stable upward trajectory. On the 8th of October, we also have a Mercury Trion Jupiter. So this is actually really favorable. So it represents harmony between communication, which is Mercury, and expansion, which is Jupiter. Um, and it just shows that they're working in tandem, creating a period where clear, optimistic, and strategic decisions are favored. This aspect encourages like, positive developments, including Bitcoin, and it fosters optimism, strategic thinking, and broader perspective. So it's like really the big picture. It allows for you to dream big. It allows for you to see the bigger picture. And the, the bigger picture is being communicated with that Mercury influence as well. So Mercury governs all aspects of communication, information exchange, and intellect and the intellectual process. So in the context of financial astrology, Mercury's influence relates to trading decisions, market sentiment, and the flow of information that influences investor behavior. Um, Jupiter, again, represents growth, expansion, abundance, and optimism. And so that really influences large-scale investments, prosperity, and market growth. So the Mercury-Jupiter trion typically signals a time of optimism in the financial markets. Investors tend to feel more confident and um, open, to, open to taking more calculated risks, which obviously can lead to the upward momentum in asset prices, including Bitcoin. So with Mercury trying um, Jupiter, the markets are likely to experience very clear communication, making it a great time for announcements, regulatory decisions, or major business moves. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and for Bitcoin, this could mean positive news related to adoption, to regulatory developments or institutional support that really boosts its price in, in this period. So Jupiter's expansive energy provides a broader perspective, helping investors focus on the long-term growth rather than short-term fluctuations. Um, this is a really great time for long-term investment strategies. Um, as the try and really supports a clear vision and the ability to see the bigger picture. So Mercury's link also to technology and Jupiter's expansive influence suggests that innovation and in financial technology, including Bitcoin, could see a boost. So the Mercury try and aspect represents a highly favorable time in the markets. And um, this harmonious alignment really encourages optimism, clear communication, strategic thinking, and long-term growth. So investors should use this time 
um, to make well-informed decisions, leveraging the positive market sentiment and um, any new developments that sort of pop up during this period. So it's a good time to take advantage of the opportunities for growth and um, while also maintaining a balanced, thoughtful investment strategy. Because then on the 10th of October, we have the transiting Saturn semi-square Bitcoin's natal Jupiter. So um, as we said, the semi-square is a minor challenging aspect and it sort of brings that tension, obstacles, and also lessons, um, especially with Saturn at play. So when transiting Saturn forms a semi-square with Bitcoin's natal Jupiter, the interplay between the restriction of Saturn and the expansion of Jupiter creates this period of tension, particularly for assets like Bitcoin, which are really known for their speculative growth-driven nature. So Saturn governs discipline, structure, and responsibility. So when, um, so in financial astrology, it often signals the need for caution, conservative strategies, and realistic approaches. So Saturn can create delays and blockages in the flow of growth, suggesting that rapid gains are unlikely at this time. So we had it the day before, we had a really positive, and then um, the following day, we have sort of a limit. And that really has been the energy for the last couple of months is it's like, we'll have these little pushes, but there's a cap. There's something, there's tension. There's like a heaviness that is holding uh, holding it back at this point in time. And so, yeah, we're not we're not out of that period yet, but but it is coming, I promise you. Nothing lasts forever. Saturn sort of imposes the need for a long-term perspective. And also it's very geared towards hard work, which, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin, we're we're about proof of work. Um, so that aligns. Um, but Saturn is also connected to authority figures and regulations. So it could mean the imposition of new rules or regulations or restrictions on um, financial markets. So that's definitely something to, to be aware of as well. So Jupiter represents growth, expansion, optimism, and wealth, and it drives speculative investments um, and is often linked to booms in the market. So when well-placed, Jupiter can really lead to significant gains. Um, but with that semi-square aspect, especially with Saturn, th there's a bit of tension there. And so there may be a bit of a, a cap in the upward momentum. So the semi-square aspect creates that friction and stress between Saturn and Jupiter, causing that internal conflict. And this aspect sort of suggests the need to balance these opposing forces, which could result in some like up and down in the market, some turbulence in the market. So it's a challenging aspect, but it also provides opportunity for growth. There's that theme again. So it, there may be a cap on this at the moment, on our upward momentum at the moment, but this is providing us, you know, it's building a foundation um, for sustainable growth into the future. So Saturn usually brings this, you know, through these opportunities for growth are really through lessons of discipline, responsibility, and realistic expectations. So this is sort of creating this period of tension between the expansion and restriction, but um, particularly for speculative assets like Bitcoin. So growth may be slower than usual, and we could prepare for increased regulatory scrutiny and potential market volatility. So again, we don't really know what's coming out, like what kind of announcements and things like that are coming out. As I've said before, we are coming into a major US election. And so we kind of don't know what um, what could, what regulatory sort of procedures could come out during that time before we actually get to the election. So while this aspect may bring like short-term challenges, um, it also offers, offers the opportunity to refine long-term strategies. So really practice patience at this time and navigate the market with discipline. So by adopting a cautious, steady approach, we can weather this period and position ourselves for future growth once that restrictive influence of Saturn eases. So I feel like we've been in this for a long time. It feels like a really long time, but it hasn't been, to be honest. We've had a pretty 
um, good upward movement this year. If we really look back at where we were this time last year, um, but it is frustrating and it it does get it does get a bit boring and a bit tedious. Um, but yeah, you just want to practice patience and and be disciplined and stick with it. And yeah, you as as I said, you can weather this period um, with some grace and ease. So on the 11th of October, we then have a transit in Chiron, try in Bitcoin's natal Saturn. Um, as you know, I love me some Chiron energy. I think that it's so transformative and healing. And in, in financial astrology, Chiron, try in Saturn represents a harmonious blending of the healing energy of Chiron with the structure and discipline of Saturn. So when transiting Chiron forms a trine with Bitcoin's natal Saturn, it creates this opportunity for healing and strengthening the foundations of Bitcoin's financial structure. So as you can see, there's a definite theme through all of these aspects that it's like, okay, we may not be going where we want to go immediately, but this is really building this foundation, this steady strengthening of, found, of our foundation. So this aspect signals a period where underlying vulnerabilities in the market can be addressed and resolved, just leading to more stable and enduring growth in the future. So Chiron is known as the wounded healer. I've spoken about it many times on this channel um, because I, I love it. I love the energy of Chiron and um, it represents areas of vulnerability and healing. And in financial astrology, Chiron influences how markets or assets deal with crises, setbacks or long term issues. So Chiron also offers opportunities for growth and progress by addressing and healing past wounds or weaknesses. So for Bitcoin, this could represent a period where any underlying market vulnerabilities are exposed, they're acknowledged and ultimately resolved. So we know that in life, in our own personal life, in Bitcoin and whatever, it's not always up only. You know, there's times where we need to sort of um, address things that need to be addressed that would be become bigger issues in the future. So this is a time when those vulnerabilities are maybe unearthed and exposed. And it's a time where we get to acknowledge them and ultimately resolve them. So it's not a negative time where it's like, oh, everything's blocking us. Um, it's really a time um, of growth and transcendence. So Saturn represents stability, structure, and long-term growth, as we said. It governs rules, discipline, and the establishment of strong foundations. So Saturn's influence, as in the previous um, aspect, brings caution, regulation, and the need for a realistic, disciplined approach. Saturn's impact on financial assets like Bitcoin is often associated with building resilience and ensuring long-term viability. So it stabilizes markets after periods of volatility or uncertainty. So we will be coming out of this eclipse, a period of volatility and uncertainty, and coming in and Saturn's bringing that energy to build that strong foundation to stabilize. And a trine is a favorable aspect. And it creates a smooth flow of energy between the two planets. So in this case, Chiron's healing energy, Saturn's stabilizing force, they're working together to address weaknesses in Bitcoin structure and allowing for growth in sustainable and bal in a balanced way. So this try and really represents a period where Bitcoin's market fundamentals can be strengthened, leading to greater stability and durability in the long term. So as I said, it's not necessarily going to show you all time highs, but it is necessary to build this foundation. And then on the 13th of October, we have quite an interesting one where the sun trines Jupiter in retrograde. So the aspect of the sun trine Jupiter is a significant moment of alignment between the energies of vitality and growth, but also a bit of a twist due to Jupiter's retrograde motion. So a trine is a harmonious aspect, indicating ease and opportunity. But since Jupiter is in retrograde, this influence comes with a reflective and introspective quality. So suggesting a reassessment of growth and expansion. 
the sun really represents vitality, focus and purpose. And in financial astrology, it indicates like the core of market sentiment, leadership and decisions. So where investors place their focus, it drives ambition, confidence and the desire for growth. And the sun really sheds light on important aspects in the markets, bringing clarity and highlighting key opportunities or challenges. And then we have Jupiter, a beautiful, expansive growth um, and optimism and prosperity. But when Jupiter is in retrograde, this expansive energy turns inward. So prompting us to reflect on past growth, decisions and long-term investments. Um, so when the sun forms this trine in retrograde, it offers the chance to harmoniously review past efforts and identify growth opportunities that may have been overlooked. So this is a powerful aspect that encourages reflection, reevaluation, and strategic planning. So for Bitcoin, this aspect suggests a time of focus on long-term stability and sustainability rather than chasing short-term gains. So we should be looking to take this opportunity to reassess our past strategies and identify hidden opportunities so the pl and plan for future expansion because expansion is coming. I know it doesn't feel like that. It feels like we're going to be stuck here at 60 forever, but it is coming. So take a cautious and thoughtful approach during this period. You'll be well positioned for the growth once Jupiter resumes its direct motion and the market begins to pick up momentum again. Then on the 16th of October, we have the transiting North Node, sextile Bitcoin's natal moon. So the North Node really represents destiny, future growth, and the direction of evolution. So while the moon then governs emotions, instincts, and public sentiment. So when a transiting North Node forms a sextile with Bitcoin's natal moon, it signifies like a positive supportive aspect that brings opportunity for emotional alignment, growth, and potentially new avenues of development. So the sextile aspect is harmonious, indicating the opportunities are definitely present, but we need to be actively, they need to be actively harnessed to realize their potential. So the North Node represents future growth where evolution and progress are taking place. Um, it can signify new paths of development, innovation, and opportunities for long-term success. Everything is focused on the long-term right now. There's nothing focused on the short-term. So it's, it's interesting, but that's been the energy for the last few months is we're accumulating. We're in this accumulation phase and um, we're preparing for the long-term. So the North Node is linked to karmic lessons and shifts in, in the financial landscape. So indicating where the future potential lies. It often points to emerging trends and markets that are growing in importance. The moon governs the collective emotions and market sentiment and reflects how investors feel about an asset and can influence short-term price movements based on emotional reactions. So the moon is really tied to instinctual gut level reactions, representing how uh, market participants might act based on emotional and intuitive impulses. So the sextile, a sextile is a 60 degree, a 60 degree aspect, and it offers this harmonious energy and opportunities for growth, but they require action to unlock their full potential. So the energy flows easily with the right decisions, growth can be realized. This aspect really does create a window of opportunity for financial markets to shift in a favorable direction. So particularly if those are involved, those involved are aligned with the emotional intuitive shifts happening in the market. So a transiting North Node sextile Bitcoin's natal moon is a highly favorable asset offering opportunities for growth, alignment, alignment with future trends and stability in the market. For Bitcoiners, this is a time to focus on our long-term strategies again and look for opportunities tied to Bitcoin's evolving role in the financial world. So rather than just looking at Bitcoin as your own personal asset, really looking at Bitcoin from the perspective of how it fits in to um, the, finance, the global financial landscape. 
So by leveraging both data and intuition, we can take advantage of the supportive energy of this aspect and position ourselves for future success as Bitcoin continues to gain traction in the global market. And then finally, on the 17th of October, we have the transiting north node, semi-square Bitcoin's natal Uranus. So this represent this presents a dynamic um, but challenging aspect. So the north node represents the direction of future growth and evolution, while Uranus symbolizes innovation, disruption, and sudden changes. So this semi-square aspect um, again, brings that friction between those the planet, those planets' energies, requiring adjustments or confronting disruptive forces. So when these two energies combine, it suggests a period of unexpected shifts or tensions within Bitcoin's evolution. The North Node um, represents where the future opportunities and growth lie, and it signifies these evolving trends and emerging areas of focus that will shape the future. Um, the North Node points to where the market um, or Bitcoin is heading on a larger scale, influencing long-term trends and the collective direction. So Uranus is a planet of technology, innovation, and sudden change. And in the context of Bitcoin, Uranus represents the groundbreaking and disruptive nature of, of Bitcoin itself. So Uranus brings about unexpected events, market shocks, and unpredictable price movements. And this often signifies um, technological breakthroughs, regulatory surprises, or shifts in the public perception that can dramatically affect the markets. So on the same day, we do have the full moon. Um, so I can see it being pretty volatile coming into that full moon. I do expect on the other side of that full moon to, to kind of have a decent upward trajectory out of it. But even with this aspect on the same day as the full moon, it's a little, um, it, we can expect some volatility. Let's just, let's put it that way. Um, with the North Node representing the future and Uranus symbolizing sudden change, this aspect suggests disruptions in Bitcoin's price or market behavior. So unexpected regulatory changes, technological breakthroughs, or even public sentiment shifts um, may cause Bitcoin's price to become more volatile. And this could lead to like sudden surges or sudden declines, just depending on how the market perceives these shifts. And as I've said in previous episodes, it's really interesting to see how Bitcoin reacts to like world events or instability in the world, sudden announcements in the world, declarations of war, you know, um, lots of different kind of news events and things like that. Um, that it's interesting how Bitcoin reacts to that because usually as the kind of traditional markets or the traditional world discredits itself, it kind of makes Bitcoin look better. And it's this disruptive Uranus energy that Bitcoin holds that um, is sort of driving that. Like Bitcoin is the ultimate disruptor. And so we're seeing that as well, but it, it, we could see some serious volatility at this time. Uranus is also linked to innovation and technology. And so the North Node semi-square can signal new technological advances or changes in um, you know, Bitcoin's underlying functions. So these developments may not be immediately lead to smooth growth, but could prompt changes that impact Bitcoin's long-term potential. So maybe something like, I don't know, the Lightning Network or things like that, we could see new developments or advances in, in those sorts of areas that are driving forward this, this growth, um, long-term growth for Bitcoin. So this aspect can also cause tension between Bitcoin and the traditional markets. So regulatory bodies may introduce new restrictions or rules directly aimed at possibly Bitcoin, but I'm probably more other crypto, um, creating this, this friction that still affects Bitcoin as well and also market behavior. So the disruptive nature of Uranus and the future orientated energy of the, the North Node really indicate that Bitcoin can face challenges as it continues to push against the boundaries of traditional finance. So Uranus 
known for its um, creating instability, combined with the tension of the semi-square, really does suggest some unpredictable price movements. And Bitcoin's price could swing dramatically in either direction. So market sentiment might be highly reactive to news and events at this time. And it's not necessarily, like I said, it's not necessarily events that are directly about Bitcoin, but it's like global world events that affect us all. Um, and it just depends um, how the market per perceives that. So while the semi-square introduces tension, it's also important to recognize this aspect also signals long-term growth potential through disruption. So this is really the theme of the season of these two weeks is it's all about long-term growth. The challenges are a time for us to grow and finesse, um, you know, iron out some of the things that we need to um and move forward so it's like it's long-term growth through disruption so bitcoin's disruptive nature bitcoin's disruptive nature is being challenged but these challenges could lead to breakthroughs that strengthen bitcoin's role in the financial system so the transiting north node and bitcoin semi-square bitcoin's natal uranus really introduces a period of tension and disruption in financial markets specifically related to bitcoin while the short term may bring some crazy volatility, regulatory friction and unexpected developments, the long term potential for growth remains really strong. So we should be cautious, manage risks carefully and just stay informed about technological and regulatory changes that could impact Bitcoin's price in the short term. So by maintaining this forward looking strategic approach, investors can navigate this challenging period and position themselves for future success as Bitcoin continues to evolve in the global financial landscape. So it's a similar message that I've been saying for the last several episodes, focus on building. If we get these big pullbacks, take those opportunities, focus on the long term. It, this, is, this is not the time for expecting new all time highs and massive moves in the market massive maintained moves in the market. Um, we may see some pretty big swings, but um, it is really focused on building for the long term, taking those opportunities and um, staying focused on where we're heading. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we're, we're nearly on the other side of these eclipses. And um, I think it's just going to be much sort of clearer on the other side of these eclipses. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, next episode, I am actually traveling. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to film an episode for the full moon, um, but I will do my best to do that. I hope I get an opportunity to record for you guys, but if not, that is the reason. So thanks for joining me today. I hope that this gave you some deeper insight. And until next time, peace, love and Bitcoin.